Hey guys, welcome to my video. This is the, uh, part two uh, regards to the part one I uploaded yesterday and it was about optics, fuse perception and especially distance and time dilation because I think distance and time dilation should be really reconsidered and investigated and explored and as you guys know I'm a person I like to explore, explore, discover, finding things out, investigate, but everything on my own reference, on my own way to, to explore those things. And most, mo mostly, most of it, it's just really by simplicity. You know, it's like logical simplicity understanding, right? So that means that you not always need to have mathematics or uh, physics to understand things and the other way around so let me let me go over here it's the same theme from the part one video about optics fuels perception distance and time dilations so let me make just a quick summary about the part one video I did yesterday it was about that right here in the middle is an object, right? It could be any object. So all here in those boxes, right, are people like you, me, your friend, your neighbor, whatever. And we all stay, stand in a certain stationary precision, right? So this one stays over here, the other one stays over here, the other one stays over here. We don't move, so we just stay stationary in the position and we all look at the same time on the same object. So all the observers, all viewers, look at the same time in the object that is in the middle. What makes us all different is that we all have different distance to, to, to the object. So if you see, for instance, here, this person let's say this is this is me has a long distance to see the object and let's say a person who is here right in this box and looks at the object let's say it's you you very short to the object the distance and so are the others so they have what makes us different is that we all have a different distance scale to the object which we observe at the same time. And then I was uh, going into the time dilation because I think time dilation is a very crucial thing, what it, what it really is. What, because time dilation is actually a very important thing to understand and to uh, uh, rethink and reconsider and explore it more. Uh, by that I mean this. Distance, let's say I hope you see it good from the camera. You see that this distance is longer than this distance, right? And this is the object where we all watch it. Now, the guy who is has a short distance to the object can see much, much clearer. It can observe much, much more detailed thing, right? Because it's closer to the object and it sees the details better what is really going on, right? So that means that he has a totally different operation and equation in his mind and theory and conclusions and concepts than this guy who is back there, right? Because the distance is longer. So when that guy who has the the, 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 the most distance to the object, when he analyzes from this far distance, he has a totally different concept, a different mindset, a different conclusion about an observed object in the middle than this guy right here because his distance is shorter. So each one of them have a different state of mindset. And by that is the reaction by observing the object in the middle. The theories, the conclusions, the concepts, the protocol are on each person 
observe a different towards the object because of the distance. As I said, this one is very close, right? This one right here, in compared to this one. So that person right here has much much a clearer detailed observation, almost close, parallel, parallel, similar, close to the object in that momentum than that person over here. He has a totally different mindset, conclusion, concept about the object in the middle because the distance. So the distance makes a real difference about observation in detail, mindsets, concept, uh, observation, theory, about equation about the object. They are all observing at the same time, but they have different distance, therefore they have a different perception Therefore, they have a different theory, a different concept, a different, different equation about the object in the middle. And what happens here in a second, he gets the, the, the action much, much faster. What that object did in one second, that that person who is much four times far away than, than, uh, than this person, it's about four seconds, so he he will perceive four times later than this person what that object did at that moment. And I think if you closer to the momentum, you see much, much clearer. It's like if you, and the time dilation, uh, uh, let me go back to time dilation, because I mentioned yesterday that it's interesting that when the sun sends its signal, its light signal to the earth, it takes eight minutes to reach the earth. And eight minutes, it's something very, there's something very interesting hidden, unfolded in that eight minutes delay. Because if, if we are closer To the signal meaning instead of waiting eight minutes right to get the signal we try to approach it closer like it's say three minutes I think the reaction the the concept the theory the reaction the mindset the concept is different than which is eight eight minutes later right so it and, and uh, so that's what's about the distance and the time delay. Very interesting. So I was thinking about when I saw this, when I drew this yesterday, I was thinking about, hey, you know what? It means if something is closer to the light, to the sun, that per, let, let's, let's, let's do it like this for a second, right? Just to make it clear, because I, it just popped up in my head, right? Let's say that this is the sun, right? This is the sun. Let's say this is Mercury. It's very interesting. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. And let's say this is the Earth. Just from the scale there's normally it's it's the Sun that's the Sun then mercury mercury and then Venus and then earth so we we get eight minutes it takes eight minutes that we receive the signal from the light from the Sun so that tells me the mercury which is the closest to the Sun must perceive the light much much faster let's say in two minutes or in three minutes what also tells me that if I would investigate what makes the differences between the eight minutes and three minutes perceiving the light faster, is I would uh, observe the characteristics in the surface in the atmosphere and compare it one which is the closest to the sun and the earth. So Mercury is the closest to the sun and earth is farther away from the sun. So what I would so that means that the mercury correct characteristics and properties in the atmosphere and the surface must be different than the earth 
because Earth is eight minutes, it gets eight minutes delayed of the sunlight, and Mercury is, let's say, two minutes or three minutes uh, maybe away from the sun, but it's closer. So they must have different characteristics in their, in their characteristics and surface. So I did my own research and then I figured something very interesting. Let's uh, just some little facts about the planet Mercury because I took Mercury because Mercury is the closest planet to the sun in, in the whole solar system. So it's, it doesn't have the 8 minutes time delay, it has let's say 3 minutes time delay. And it, I think it makes a huge difference in this time dilation which we will see that occurs in the characteristics in the atmosphere and the surface of the planet if you compare Mercury surface and atmosphere in comparing with the Earth surface and atmosphere. So I wrote here some notes do down uh, uh, um, as you see and it's, and, and it's something very it's very interesting what Mercury has and we use Mercury molecules and atmosphere and substances that benefits a lot on earth now check this out first of all and i was right the earth takes 365 days to surround the planet earth uh, the planet uh, the earth orbits around the sun takes 365 days right mercury orbital period takes 88 days. So I was right, right? It's closer to the Sun. Time dilation is shorter than 8 minutes. So it must be faster than uh, the Earth rotation, which is 88 days instead of 365 days. And the inter another interesting thing is that the Mercury surface looks like an appearance to the Moon, like the same thing. The surface on the, uh, on the moon. Now, a little bit background history. The, the name Mercury was named after a Roman and it means the messenger to the gods. The question is, who are the gods? Is it us? I don't know. So that's one thing. Another thing is that we sent uh, two spacecraft, two spacecraft has visited Mercury. The first one was called the Mariner 10. We shoot it up in their orbit to Mercury in 1970s. The second call, spacecraft we shot out to Mercury call, uh, was called the Messenger, it was 2004, and, the, and it orbited the Mercury over 4,000 times in four years before exhausting its full and crashing into the planet's surface on April uh, 30th, 2015. Now I was a little bit skeptical because it says the orbit, the messenger launched 2004 and it orbited more Mercury over 4,000 times in four years. Now listen carefully about the numbers. The messenger launch 2004 and it orbited Mercury. It or what is what you have to focus on is it orbits the Mercury 4,000 times in four years. Now, the Mercury orbits the Sun 88 Earth days. That tells me that the messenger that was launched 2004 knew or know what is behind the sun, right? Because if the, mes if the Mercury planet takes 88 days, 88 Earth days to surround the sun, and the messenger we shot, it, we sh we shot 2004 to uh, observe the Mercury, and it ran over 4,000 times in four years around the Mercury, that means the messenger must have seen what is behind the sun because it's it's it circulate it orbits the sun too right obviously if it runs 4000 times the mercury and mercury takes 88 days to orbit 
uh, 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 the sun. Very interesting. So I think the messenger knows what's going on, what we don't see, what is behind the sun on the other side. I found it very interesting. Uh, another interesting thing is that what I figured out is that it, it's so interesting what the beneficial is between the eight minutes time dilation and what the benefits is if a planet is closer to the Sun or if, if it's more far away from the Sun. So Mercury is the closest, then comes Venus and then comes Earth. Now the Mercury uh, um, has 42% molecular oxygen and compared to Earth it has 20.95% oxygen. That means the air what we breathe is oxygen and the mercury it seems like it has doubled uh, a double oxygen than our planet Earth. So it's doubled than the oxygen what we need to breathe you know the air to breathe the earth oxygen has 20.95 percent mercury has 42 percent molecular oxygen that means the time dilation of eight minutes makes a huge difference and the distance to, towards the sun because the earth the mercury has 42 percent oxygen and the earth is two times further away approximately and has then less oxygen and has less oxygen and has 20.95% oxygen on earth the other interesting thing is what i figured out is that mercury has a trace amounts of becomes very interesting Xenon, Krypton, and Neon, and Argon. The reason why I see those four because there are plasma lights. Uh, by plasma lights, I mean um, Argon, Xenon, and Krypton, and Neon are kind of a light, like a whitish light you know, whitish, bluish light. And let me uh, read you some. Uh, it's a, a Xenon was discovered 1898. It has, it has like a blue, whitish light. And Krypton was discovered 1898. So Xenon and Krypton both were discovered in 1898. And Krypton uh, is Greek and it means uh, The Hidden One, very interesting names, The Hidden One. And those, uh, um, those Krypton and Xenon exists on Mercury. So that means, see, I think it has all to do with the distance and the time dilation. As closer you get to the Sun, it ch the planet changes its atmosphere, material, surface, etc. So we figured out that Mercury has 42% of oxygen because it's close to the earth uh, it's close to the sun and the earth is farther away and has only the half of oxygen uh, mercury has elements which the earth doesn't have mercury has as i said um, Argon, Xenon, Krypton, and Neon. And those are like, like white light. It's a, it's a, it's a, let, let, me, let me read it right here real quick. I wrote it down. And the interesting thing is that Krypton and Xenon called noble gases. Noble gases are frequently used in tubes for many purposes, from lightning to switching. Krypton 
like the other noble gases, can be used in lightning and photography. Very interesting. Krypton's multiple emission lines make ionized krypton gas discharges appear whitish. What you see in fluorescence lights like this, or like this, maybe the light what we see in our earth atmosphere, maybe it has some of it too, a chemical mixture of it. Krypton based, uh, Krypton's multiple emission lines make ionized krypton gas discharge appear whitish which in turn makes krypton based bulbs useful in photography as a brilliant white light source. Maybe that's what we see, you know, maybe the sun has krypton. Krypton is used in some types of, of ph photogra uh, photographic flashes used in high speed photography. Krypton is used in some types of photographic flashes used in high speed photography. Krypton gas is also combined with other gases to make other gases like it could be um, xenon or uh, neon. Krypton gas is also combined with other gases to make luminous signs that glow with a bright greenish yellow light. Interesting. All right. What else I got here? Uh, Krypton is a noble gas in fluorescence tubes and it's used in combination with mercury. Xenon is another noble gas that occurs in mercury, on the planet Mercury. It, in pure state, has a high breakdown voltage, making it useful in high voltage switching tubes. Xenon is also used as a component of gas mixture when production of ultraviolet, ultraviolet radiation is required, required in plus, for example, in plasma displays, usually to excite as, uh, uh, as phosphor in the neon bulbs. What I, what I want to, why I'm reading this is, is the reason is because of the material in the atmosphere on the surface that has mercury, which we don't have on the planet Earth, is maybe because mercury is closer to the sun and has a lower time dilation than our planet Earth, right? The Earth uh, receives the light and we say, and the interesting thing is that we say the fastest speed is light. Also very interesting. So mercury has a lot of noble gases. Maybe it's because it's closer to the sun and it receives the light faster than the planet Earth. Neon, argon, uh, uh, krypton and xenon gases, which are used nowadays in a lot of technologies. Also very interesting and also in light. So it tells me that it seems like that science discovered that the materials in the atmosphere of Mercury has a lot of beneficials to on our planet Earth. So we can use those materials, gases that occurs in Mercury as a benefits to develop in, 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 when it comes down to photography, flashlights, lights, light bulbs, uh, uh, um, LEDs, uh, m computer monitors and all that stuff. It's very, very interesting. It's like we need Mercury's materials to develop in the future. Interesting. And maybe that has something to do with time dilation and the eight minutes time dilation and the closer to the sun. Interesting. And what is also interesting, what should be reconsidered, if uh, if the Messenger 2004 orbit, orbited the Mercury planet, the planet Mercury, 4,000 times, and Mercury only needs 88 Earth days to orbit the Sun, that tells me that the Messenger is the only one who really knows what is behind the sun, which we cannot see. Very interesting. So I I hope it was not too complicated. I will make things 
in another video easier but it's let me summary everything together I was talking about a time dilation that when the Sun sends the light signal it need it takes eight minutes to reach the earth and I was thinking about when I did this example on my part in the part one uh, um, video that if we if we all look at the same time on an object in the middle at the same time what makes difference is the distance the closer you get to an object you see more you have more benefits you understand things better and so on your mindset your state of mindset is different uh, your concepts your theories conclusion and, and equations are much much better and clearer if you observe things closer than far from the distance right so that person who is closer to the distance has the benefits of let's say if that observer is two minutes away from the Sun <clears throat> the eight minutes delay let's say it has only two minutes it is much much further developed and advanced than a person who is eight minutes later behind it right so it's I think this has to be really really reconsidered and reinvestigate about this eight minutes time dilation and what the eight minutes The reaction of it right because as I said here when these are all observers all stationary right and all that could be you me your friend neighbors each one of us is right here we all look at the same time on an object that is in the middle the difference between us all is the distance right so that means that each person has a different mindset a different theory a different conclusion a different concept a different equation about the object it's observing like the person who is closer right like here to the object sees more understands more uh, more detailed more precisely than a person who is further away and watch the object right so it's quite interesting I, I Guys, I think I hope you understand something because this is something very profounding if you understood what I'm trying to explain here. So thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.